everybody. My name is Lindsay Early. I am a technical services engineer here at Onshape. Today's webinar is focusing on what's new in Onshape. Uh, specifically, we're going to focus on releases 128 and 129, which happened after the last webinar that we had. If you have any questions, Throughout today's session, you are welcome to type them into the questions panel uh, that should show up in your um, meeting. And I will try to answer them as they come, or if I miss it, I will grab it at the end and make sure to get you an answer. So let's get started. So first, we're going to talk a little bit about how Onshape does updates, um, and then we'll get into the actual improvements that were seen in versions 128 and 129. Specifically, we have some CAD improvements, a lot of drawing improvements, some mobile improvements, some general settings type improvements, enterprise, and also we have a new addition to the Learning Center. And then we'll wrap up talking about how you can get into the change log, help, and other resources. So first of all, uh, Onshape puts out an update every three weeks. So we have quite a tight update schedule. Uh, all the updates are automatic for all users and transparent. So everyone is always going to be on the latest version of Onshape. Every update is going to include some new functionality as well as um, bug fixes and other things like that. So when we first post a new update, you're going to see a description of the updates in the forum. That's a good place to start. Uh, the day after, we usually post a blog. And then every couple of releases is when we do a webinar like this. So I'm going to be going back and forth between my presentation and the live on shape to show you some of these features, but um, let's talk through a couple of them first. So in CAD, so specifically focusing on modeling, uh, the updates were that we added a variable table. So previously you always, you add your variables over in the feature list uh, and then you would have to just uh, filter the list to see a list of variables, but now on the right panel there is an option to select the variable table. So I'll show you that here in a second. Also the sheet metal model feature dialog, so when you're creating a new sheet metal model, has been enhanced with collapsible group boxes because there's a lot of inputs for that and it was difficult to navigate, especially on smaller screens. So now we have group boxes that you can collapse certain sections on. And then the last CAD improvement that we added was dissolving subassemblies. So that means you can promote the parts and mates from a subassembly up to the higher level assembly. So let's take a look at some of these. First, let's take a look at the variable table. So this is just a model of an exhaust pipe. And you can access the new variable table over here on the right. All of the variables that you have defined on the left will show on the right. And as I mouse over certain things, you'll notice that it will highlight it over there in the feature list. Also, if I scroll down to where some of these things are used, it will highlight the sketches or features that things are used in, in addition to the variable itself. Also, if I right click on a variable, I can automatically filter filter the feature list and it will filter it down just to that variable and I can open it and edit it. You can also delete it directly from the uh, variable table and you can add new ones. So if I wanted to add a new variable in here, uh, let me pick a new name. I'm trying to pick something that already exists. And you can define the type just like you would in the regular variable dialog and put in a value. It will appear at the bottom of the feature list and you can reorder it just by dragging and dropping it. You can also delete it from here or delete it from the table as well. So 
you have a lot of flexibility. It's a two-way bridge. You can do a lot of the same things um, in each location. I can even change the name of it or the type of a variable, and I can change the name as well as I wanted if I wanted to. And it changes it in the feature list. Also, these are always going to be ordered um, from top down. So if I move D7 up above D0, it will update over here to do the same thing once it refreshes. So you can see D7 is above D0. So it'll always be in the hierarchy, hierarchy the correct hierarchy. Let's bring up a sheet metal model next. And here, if I look at the sheet metal model feature, you'll notice that we have all the same selections as we had before, it's just it was such a large interface and it was difficult to understand what things kind of went together. So now we have group boxes to define each set of inputs and you can expand them or shrink them down. And this one is exciting. A lot of people have been asking for it for a long time. The ability to dissolve a subassembly from within a higher level assembly. So here we have an assembly that has made up of a bunch of other subassemblies. If I right click on one of them, I can choose dissolve subassembly. And if I do that, you'll notice that all of the subassemblies with the same name are going to be dissolved. And what it does is it promotes all of the components that were in that subassembly, and it also promotes all the mates. So we were at 68 mates, now we're at 124. You'll also notice that there is still a subassembly here, but if we go to it, it is empty. So you can just remove that tab if you need to. So that's a pretty exciting one. Uh, let's go back over here. So those are the main CAD improvements. We have a ton of drawing improvements with this release or with the last two releases. Uh, we've enhanced the export from drawings. You can now export to SVG, JPG, or PNG. You also have the ability to export selected drawing sheets. So you can export just the current sheet or you can export sheets one, three, and five. We also have added detail section and detail view identifiers on the drawing panel before it would just say section or detail it wouldn't have the label so you it was difficult to tell which one was the one that you had selected you can create auxiliary views from section views now uh, we have a revision table improvement in that um, the revision description writes to a custom property that you can then um, search on or you could link to an external system the smart dimension tool has been improved and i'll show you that shortly and then also the ability to add view labels you can add view labels to any view at all in a drawing now not just things like a section or a detail so let's take a look at some of these improvements i'm going to bring up a model that has a drawing so here I have a drawing. Let's take a look at the export options that have been improved. Right click on the drawing and go to export. And you'll notice that in the format options, I have the three additional options that we talked about before it used to just be these four. Additionally, if I'm doing a DXF or DWG export, I can choose what sheets I want to export. So all sheets, current sheet, or custom sheets. And it'll work similarly to any other print dialog. You can do a range with a dash between, or you can do individual pages by separating with a comma. Additionally, we've added identifiers to the drawing panel here on the left. So before it used to just say section or detail, now it tells you exactly what that view is by adding the label as well. The revision table up here, this revision description is connected to a custom property. If I right click on the drawing and go to properties, you'll notice at the bottom that there is a revision description. And it's a two way bridge. If I change the text, 
it's going to update it here in the drawing as well. Also, if I go back to my on shape and I search for, an, well, I got to add the uh, criteria for the revision description and I'm going to search for initial revision. I can then search on it because it's a custom property. Also, if you have an external system such as an ERP or a PLM that needs to track design changes, this could be, this makes it a lot easier to get that information into that external system if you need to. We've also improved the smart dimension tool a little bit. Let me bring up another example. So the first improvement to the smart dimension tool is if I take the silhouetted edges of a cylinder, so in this case in a section view, it's gonna automatically add a diameter symbol in the front before you would have to add it manually. Also now you can select two circular edges at the same time to create a wall thickness dimension. Previously it was not possible to select both. And then last but not least in our drawings, we can add view labels. So if I just double click on this and get into the view properties, I can add a view label here down at the bottom and give it whatever name I want. The benefit of this is it will move with the drawing, whereas if I just put a note on a drawing, oops, don't press escape like me. And I try to move the drawing view, it doesn't, it's not hooked into the drawing view, so it won't move with it. So the label will enable it to move along with the drawing view. Okay, back to the presentation. So that's the last of the live demos. The rest of these updates I'm gonna kind of just talk through. So there were some mobile improvements added to the IO system in the last two releases. The first you can see on the right is that we added the mass property override to the IOS interface so you can override your mass properties. Additionally, uh, while working inside of a model in an assembly, you can hide all or other mates if you want to, if you have mates displaying. And then finally, you have the ability to change configurations of an assembly while inside of the IOS application now. So in general improvements, we have enhanced our password policy. Uh, we have partnered with haveibeenpwned.com. Uh, they have a database of compromised passwords. Uh, so even if your new passwords meet our complexity requirements, if they've been found in that database, they will be rejected. This is not going to affect any existing accounts with existing passwords, but if you choose to change your account password or you choose to um, create a new account, those passwords will be checked against this database. Uh, all of your data is secure. We use a K anonymity check. So uh, we don't have access to your passwords and they don't know where the passwords came from. So definitely high security as far as um, how that is done. We have also added company-wide export rules for professional and enterprise level subscriptions. Before we released the ability to do uh, export rules just on an individual user level and now we've been able to promote it to a company-wide. What the export rules allow you to do is you can add a prefix or a suffix to your file name whenever you're exporting to certain file types. You can choose what file types you want to apply the rule to. So like a lot of people add their revision or um, some other custom property in with the file name because they're taking it out of Onshape where they would have access to that data. And then we've also made some improved uh, assembly performance. Uh, we improved the assembly opening time as well as reduced the client side memory usage required when opening assemblies. Enterprise level subscriptions, there were some improvements to single sign-on. We've added ping one 
uh, you can get some information on it in the help. So cad.onshape.com forward slash help. You just search for ping one or you can type in that address on this page. Additionally, uh, we've improved our integration with Azure single sign-on. We've added Onshape to the Azure Active Directory gallery, which allows uh, users to be able to, or administrators, to be able to add Azure single sign-on a lot more easily to Onshape. And then the last improvement for the last couple of releases is that we've released a new tech briefing on surfacing. Uh, it's specifically on um, tips and best practices. So it gets into the different types of surfacing tools we have and also curves and how to create them and how to evaluate a surface for quality. So check that out in our learning center. So to wrap up, I wanna talk about um, help and resources that you have available to you. First off, every release is documented in our change log. You can access our change log at onshape.com forward slash change log. I'm showing there all the updates for 129. And so you'll notice that I didn't talk about absolutely everything that was released in 129. We usually pick out the biggest highlights that are gonna affect everyone. So if you want to see a full list, you can just go to the change log website. Don't forget, you can get to the help uh, in the top right of Onshape by your name. There is a question mark menu. That's where you can get into the help and find the things like those single sign-on additions and capability. You can also get to the learning center from there, and that's how you can uh, look up the new tech briefing on surfacing. If you're in a feature script, you can get to the feature script documentation from there, as well as this keyboard shortcuts. You can also select the what's new. So you can, it's a direct link over to what things have been added in the latest releases. You can go to the forums and then you can also contact support from that menu. These are just some resources that are very helpful in Onshape, getting to the help forums, the learning center, and looking at the latest improvements in Onshape. So a lot of these things are all available in that help menu from the last link, but if you want the direct links, here they are here. And then also don't forget to run a system check if you haven't already, if you're a new user. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe or see some of our other videos linked here.